If you are a pianist who wants to be a great accompanist, I'm about to share with you the non-musical skills you need to be successful. I'm Rachel Ehring, and I help pianists turn the skills that they already have into income through accompanying. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about what is meant by non-musical skills. These are skills that most successful accompanists have that are not directly related to playing the piano. Maybe personality traits, work ethic, interpersonal skills, anything non-musical that will set you apart and make people want to hire you and work with you as a pianist. Sometimes I call these soft skills. So let's get into it. The first soft skill that is really, really helpful as an accompanist is that you are able to get along with all different types of personalities and types of people. When you are an accompanist, you are probably going to be working with a wide range of people and personality types. You might encounter divas who have very large egos. You might encounter shy musicians who need to be encouraged to come out of their shell. And you might even encounter some socially awkward people who have spent their whole life hidden in a practice room. If you can meet each of these individuals where they are at and show appreciation for their unique characteristics, they're going to want to work with you again and again. A couple of quick tips for how you can do this. First of all, spend just a little bit of time getting to know the person. Ask them questions about themselves and their background. Find out why they became a musician and what they love about their instrument. If they share something personal with you about their family, make a mental note or even an actual post-it note about it so that you can ask them about it the next time you see them. Sometimes being an accompanist can be a bit like being a therapist, honestly, because for many musicians, playing music is their therapy. So always be sensitive and kind to the people that you are collaborating with. No matter what level the musician is that you're partnering with, treat them with respect and meet them where they are at, with the common goal of making beautiful music together. The second skill that is absolutely essential to being a great accompanist is that you must be dependable. If someone tells you that rehearsal starts at 10, you show up at 9.45 or 9.50, you want to make sure that you always have your music organized and you have everything you need for a rehearsal or performance. Before you ever show up, you should have your music in a binder and have the pages organized so that you have the fewest page turns possible. If you're using an iPad, make sure that you have the music in a set list in the order that you need it with any bookmarks or cuts marked. You should have a pencil ready to go and be ready before rehearsal time starts. Another key aspect of being dependable is managing your calendar well. This can be hard for some of us, but make sure you know your availability so that you can schedule rehearsals and performances and then write everything down so that you never miss a rehearsal or horrors a performance. Whatever system you decide to use, whether it's a paper planner or an app on your phone, be consistent and organized with your calendar and people will learn to trust you as a dependable accompanist. Number three is a characteristic that in some senses either you have it or you don't, but I believe it can be developed and that is being calm. Being calm is essential as an accompanist because you're going to be put into all kinds of different stressful situations. You might be asked to sight read for a performance or asked to perform in a high pressure situation. You also might be in a situation where you're performing with someone who is a ball of nerves and you need to stay calm to help them calm down. I'm not saying that you should never get nervous. Nerves are a natural part of performing and I still get nervous to this day when I perform, but there are ways to appear calm and help yourself deal with the nerves that are inevitable when performing. A couple of ways that you can calm yourself and perhaps your musical partner as well when the nerves hit is first of all, take time to breathe. You might wanna try something like box breathing. Box breathing is simply where you breathe in for four counts, hold for four counts, and then exhale for four counts. And you do that several times. 
If you have the time, you can listen to a meditation before you perform. I have a video called Affirmations for Performing Musicians that is designed to put you in a positive mindset before you perform, so check that out. Number four of soft skills that great accompanists need is one of the most important, and that is flexibility. Being an accompanist can be unpredictable, both musically and in other ways. If you are performing with someone who skips an entire line of music in the performance, you have to be ready to skip that line too and find where they are. You might be working with a choir conductor who asks you to play warm-ups unexpectedly or who might decide to rehearse a piece of music that he or she told you wouldn't be rehearsed until a later date. The life of an accompanist is one of curveballs and the more adept you are at facing these curveballs, the more sought after you will be. I wanna give you a word of caution here though. You don't have to take every single curveball that is thrown at you, and that is where number five comes in. Number five is to set good boundaries. As an accompanist, there are going to be people that try to take advantage of you or who make unreasonable demands often without even realizing they are being unreasonable. And this is where you have to know how to set boundaries. For instance, you might have a singer ask you to play a song in a different key the day before a performance. If you're comfortable doing that, great, I admire you. But if you, like me, break out in a cold sweat at the thought, then you can tell the singer no and offer alternatives. Perhaps you can ask if there's a way to get the music in the correct key. Often there is. Or if it is a difficult song that you know will be tricky to play in a different key, you can tell them no and explain that you won't be able to play it well by the performance. Other areas where you might need to set boundaries are around being paid fairly and on time, getting music with enough time to learn it, people who want to cancel or reschedule rehearsals frequently, or people not showing you respect in other areas. Just remember that when you are setting boundaries, you have to be willing to walk away from something if the boundary is crossed. Are you willing to say, I won't play for your recital if I don't have the music a month ahead of time? Are you willing to walk away from a performance if you aren't paid ahead of time? It's very important to set boundaries, but make sure that they are ones that you are willing and able to enforce and that you have communicated them clearly ahead of time. Now there might be things that come up that were unexpected and you never thought to communicate about ahead of time. You didn't anticipate that the singer was going to ask you to play in a different key at the last minute. So you never told them that you weren't okay with that. My experience has been that if you are kind, gracious and respectful, 99.9% .9 of the time, if you have to say no to something, the person is going to receive it well because you've shown that you are reasonable and gracious. So my approach has been to say yes as often as I can so that when I really need to say no, it is usually met with acceptance. So these are the five non-musical skills that you need to become a great accompanist. Let's review. Number one, you know how to interact with a variety of personality types. Number two, you have to be dependable. Number three, remain calm. Number four, be flexible. And number five, know how to set good boundaries. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a video to help you earn more money as a pianist through accompanying. I'll talk to you soon.